Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Astral Interview. And here with me, I have Zara Lalani. Welcome, Zara, and thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So before we begin, Zara, before we talk about um, what we're going to talk about, let's talk about you a little bit. Tell us a little bit about you, where you grew up, um, your childhood. Um, tell us about your early years. Well, I, um, I grew up in Africa, in Nairobi, Kenya, and I came to Canada when I, in my early teens. Right. Um, and so I don't, I don't have a huge recollection of my childhood, except that I left shortly after a civil war. It was a bit traumatic. And uh, that was a life-changing experience on its own. And then to come to a safe haven like Canada was obviously something that we were really grateful for and appreciative. Um, subsequently became a nurse. Um, I, worked in, I worked in oncology for the, for the first, I would say, 15 years of my career. And then I transitioned to end of life hospice care and palliative care. And um, I've since become an end of life doula. So end of life companion is my uh, business. And basically I support people who are transitioning to their end of life chapter, you could say. Um, so it could be during, uh, let's say initially through a diagnosis, a terminal diagnosis, or they also wanna just plan ahead for their end of life journey, or they are imminently dying and a family member calls me for support. And I'm also a tarot companion. So I provide tarot support to people, tarot counseling, guidance, coaching, and um, looking to use tarot for my end of life companioning, just to allow people to use this medium as a way of expression and connection. So let's talk a little bit about how the transition happened from being a nurse to what you do now. Um, I'm still a nurse. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah, I still, I'm still a nurse. This is just other facets of me. Um, I'm still a nurse. I still work full time as a nurse. Okay. Uh, but I feel like this is just other aspects of, of my life that are kind of uh, work, work with, the, with my profession. So I would say that they are uh, supporting me in and me as a being. Um, so the work I do as a nurse, this work as an end of life companion that I do, and the tarot companioning, all kind of fit in with who I am as a as a being. So tell me then how the, these modalities came into your life, how these mediums came into your life. How were you introduced to? Yeah. Them? Interestingly, I, um, I love, you know, uh, listening to people doing tarot readings on YouTube. I um, would go to tarot readers for guidance, you know, throughout my life. And um, I went through, uh, like, so I have actually laid out my tarot cards just to make it a little bit more interesting around expressing my story to you. So I'm just going to use some of them. Like, this is me, happy-go-lucky, just extremely just enjoying life to the full. Um, just happy, enjoying partying, having fun, uh, not a care in the world kind of person. Yes, I've had some obviously trials and tribulations in my life, but I always managed to have fun. Uh, but there came a point in my life about, uh, about two and a half, three years ago, where let's just say that there was a darkness and energy that I'd, uh, I guess I invited into my, my, my realm. And uh, that was a life-changing experience for me in that it was a, a, using tarot cards. I had my tower moment and basically uh, the ground beneath me opened and I fell into this dark abyss and um, I couldn't find my way out. And uh, I thought, oh my gosh, like, I don't even know where to start. Like, I, I didn't know who I was. I lost my voice. I was um, I was a shell. I was just a shell walking around, right. um, and not to get details because I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to give energy to something that I don't think deserves it. But my experience was such that um, it led me to a place where I was literally paralyzed. I didn't recognize myself. This is the eight of swords. You could see just completely unable to move forward. Uh, but then I walked into Banyan Books, you know, just looking for some resources and support. And 
you know, they say you're supposed to be gifted your first deck of tarot cards, but this uh, deck of tarot cards picked me. And I have been in love with this deck since I, uh, since I bought it. And I bought it and I brought it home and it was sitting around for months. I didn't open it. I just thought there's no way I, I would know how to do this stuff. But I, as, a, as a nurse and an end of life companion and someone that values, cherishes, and their life's work is around supporting people who can't express themselves like at the end of life right. uh, and being able to read through it comes very naturally to me to be able to pick up things. I'm quite intuitive. Um, and so I feel like these cards chose me. I brought them home. Yes. And I started eventually one day when they were like, I opened them and they were sitting there for a while. And then it was a very slow unfolding and just being with the cards. And then I, I, I started reading the tarot cards and, um, yeah, so that that's and I became more intuitive because I went into this really dark space. But through that dark space, I went into this hermit mode where you just kind of have to go within and figure out who you are, what your purpose is, and who you are as a being, and how you want to move forward. And that just sort of, I guess, led me to to finding myself. I thought I knew who I was when I was this person, uh, but I I realize now that that was just. Um, just a small facet of who I am. And so this kind of brought me to uh, releasing my old self or allowing myself to flourish a bit more. And, and the death card would de depict me kind of releasing who I thought I was to become this person that I am now right. and rising beyond, you know, um, a situation that I felt controlled me and using it to kind of go inward and, and really use that to guide me forward instead of having it defeat me so can we talk about spirituality in your life like what is the what is your um how does spirituality come into your life how does it shift um the tarot cards you you shared a little bit about tarot cards and how you enjoyed watching it watching uh youtube mm -hmm. and facebook's and and different tarot readings you went to tarot reading mm -hmm. But then before that, what brought you into that world of energy and tarot? I, uh, to be honest, I'm just, um, I believe in, in messages being sent. I believe in synchronicities. I believe in everything happening for a reason. And so I wouldn't say that there was a, a specific thing. It's just the, that I somehow had those beliefs that I don't know where I've picked them up, but I just feel like even if I find something on the street or I meet somebody, there's a purpose to it. And I'm always trying to figure out what that is. Right. And the more I've become more in tune with the divination tool, I realize that it comes so much more easily to me, like the connection, the synchronicities and stuff like that. So right. yeah, I would, I would be able to pinpoint, um, anything with the spirituality aspect except that somehow I always I, I harness that and harbor that within me just need it to kind of express it a bit more and using this tool I'm able to do that so are you someone you would say would um in the past like when people came into your life or you would have intuitive insights into them but didn't really recognize them is that someone that you were probably yeah, what I would say is that sometimes I would blurt out things and people would be like, how do you even know that? But I, I was just like, I don't know, just from your energy and picking it up, I would come in and say random things, but I never even thought anything of it. But I think part of what led me to this darkness was not listening to my intuition. Right. You know, uh, I, I didn't listen to it. I shut it down. Yeah. Um, and I think it was like, no, you need to listen to your intuition. And I feel like this experience manifested itself to uh, bring me to that point where I do listen to my intuition and I know that it exists and I know that's going to guide me in the right direction. Right. But I had kind of felt dumb and like, uh, I would say I dulled that part of my life. And I think that's what led in, me into the space where I was like, no, I kind of shattered and broke because I was ignoring my intuition. Okay, so maybe this is difficult for you, but maybe it'll help other people. But do you want to talk a little bit about the darkness and how it came, how you, um, how you feel you drew it to yourself and how you um, basically succeeded in letting it go? Um, like I said, I feel like I, you know, I am an extremely intuitive person. 
and I, I just shut myself down. I wasn't connecting with myself. I was more external material, you could say. I was being drawn out of myself by some energies. And I felt like I wasn't making the time out for myself and ignoring that aspect of, you know, like, this doesn't sound right. This isn't right. Mm-hmm. Yet, I continued to walk. Instead of taking a mom- moment to pause or to go inward or to even pray about it or just take time out to say what's going on, right. I externally would, like, you know, start crying all of a sudden. And I'd be like, I wouldn't know why. Then nothing would have happened that was horrible but I would just start crying and I would be like why am I crying I should be happy but I'm crying right and even that did that didn't even alert me to the fact that maybe something's really inherently wrong in the scenario right and I think that's when you keep ignoring those signals and signs and that's what happens that's what I believe it then something happens to say no yeah. stop yeah and and so yeah yeah so would you be able to tell us a little bit about your experience with communicating with guides or angels or um, do they help you when you're doing tarot readings? Do you get messages from specific um, entities or is it you can call on whoever you want? Yeah, so, uh, you know, um, I don't like to call myself a psychic or I don't like to say that I'm connected to this being or that being. I just I, I somehow don't like to call myself that, that title. What I like to say is if someone comes to me for a reading, it's between me and that person and the cards. And there, and it leads to a journey, you know, that we're going to embark on together. Right. And so I would say, this is what I see and whatever the person's open to, there are always messages in the cards. There's always guidance in the cards. Right. Uh, but I wouldn't say that I... I wouldn't say that, oh, I have a special gift to connect to this or that. I just say I hone into my ability to tune in, to find the messages. And just really my heart center is around helping people and guiding them. And that usually leads to a reading that where they can take it home and sit with it. And often, um, you know, they will come back and, and have some further reflection, do some further work or some further reflection. You know, it's not just to say, oh, I'm trying to give you some information, go. I, I would hope that people would find it helpful and useful yeah. on their journey. Right? So that's my goal. Yeah. Absolutely. So you talk yeah. about end of life journeys and helping people with their end of life journeys. When you're can you talk a little bit more about that a little more descriptively as to your role in that? Yeah, so um, I, as, as a child, I was always drawn to this phenomenon. I was, I was, was like, oh my God, I'm here for a temporary existence, right? As a child, I was always like fascinated by that. But nobody would ever talk to me about it. You're not allowed to really talk about it. Um, and I always thought, gosh, but all these people, like that no one is supposed to talk about it. And then you find out someone died, you know, you didn't have a chance to have a conversation with them. Or there are also people that don't want you to know they're dying. Right. Um, and I'm like, oh, all those opportunities for support are gone. But that for me is um, a bit of the work I'm doing is to figure out what happens after we die. That's my own personal journey. Right. But while we're here in this realm, my goal and my hope and my wish and my desire is to increase conversations about this. So I have a YouTube channel called End of Life Conversations and Reflections, where I just invite people to have conversations with me around that topic around death and dying, their experiences. Some people have some really interesting experiences that I think will help people feel more comfortable around talking about death and dying. And secondly, um, working in hospice, I had many patients who never want to talk about it or their families didn't want to talk about it yet they were on this journey together you know the inevitable journey yet there wasn't the connection and support and as a nurse I always felt like how do I bring those things together for my patient how do I make it so that they feel hold they feel whole they feel held they feel supported and they don't feel scared Um, so I'm like but that needs to happen you know earlier on um, but that is not an opportunity afforded to a lot of people because there, sometimes you won't have those people in your life to encourage those conversations. So 
I just want to bring it out to the universe and say, let's have those conversations. So when we embark on that journey, nobody's isolated, nobody's feeling unsupported, um, and that they can have those conversations. If they're scared, they can say, I'm scared, you know? And let's have a conversation about what's scaring you and how do we support you to feel less scared and more supported. So yes, repeating myself, I, I would say that's my, my hope and my goal is more around that aspect. And this is just something that is kind of connecting the two. And working in palliative care, I work with um, a lot of physicians, and I, I I asked them if I would what did they think about me using Tara with our patients? And I was shocked to hear that they thought it would be wonderful because wow. they thought it would be a really good way. They were like, "What if you could just sit there while our patients came in for their appointments and wrote out a few cards? Because the cards are an invitation for a conversation." Right. And when they come to our clinic, our doctors are having to say, you know, what if things don't work out as, they, as you would like, uh, or this is your prognosis, have you thought about your end of life journey? They have to have those conversations, but they were like, yeah, it would be amazing if as a nurse, I could use this tool to have those conversations and guide them a little bit. Because, you know, having a conversation facing somebody can be a little bit daunting, yeah. but having a conversation with this tool, this divination tool in front of you, it's yeah. a conversation that becomes a little less about that person, but let's see what's coming up for you, right? So there's a way around it, and maybe one day I'll find a way to do this. Well, it's, I think it's amazing that you're, you had the strength to ask, because who, where do we see this, right, out there? And the fact that you had the strength to ask that question, would it be okay, and, and getting that approval... Yeah now brings a new dimension to healing for these individuals who are at their, at a really, you know, um, what's, what, what's a word I could use? Um, unknown stage in their life, right? A stage that really has no answers um, unless they open up to the possibilities that anything's possible. Yeah. And you know, sometimes the fear is just so ingrained within us. Yeah. There are also people that think if they don't talk about it, it won't happen. They're in denial, just like our society can be denial about many things. Yeah. So too is is death is something like if I don't talk about it, it won't happen. And then all of a sudden the person's dying and you haven't had a conversation. You yeah. haven't had a chance to say I love you. You haven't had a chance to forgive. Yeah. You haven't had a chance to connect, you know? Yeah. Um, so I feel like those opportunities shouldn't go missed. No, for anybody, yeah. you know, and never bring those back. It's not like you're going on a trip and coming back. And oh, when you come back, I'll have that conversation. And this trip is permanent. You're going on this trip. It's a one-way ticket. So how do you say, all right, like if I were going on a trip far away, I would have my affairs in order. I would have conversations with my family. If I die on this trip, which I've done, if I die on this trip, I tell my sister, this is what I want, and this is what I want you to say, or this is, these are my documents, right? Um, so how do we, you know, make it easier for people to have those conversations? And sometimes when you have those conversations, it, it does catch people off guard, but if you're willing to do it, then other people are willing to do yeah. it. Well. Like, okay, yeah. So talk to me about your YouTube channel. You must have had some amazing conversations with people with, on your YouTube channel. Maybe you can share one such story with us that stands out to you that will really um, inspire others. Yeah, so I mean, I've, I've, I've like interviewed my boss, who's the head of palliative care division at UBC and the BC Cancer Agency, and her perspective, she's written a book. But I've also interviewed, um, you know, uh, people that it's so many different perspectives and they're all so important. Uh, but the most exciting about it is when people tell me that uh, they had a loved one say, you know, I see a spirit, I see a God, I see my loved one just before they die. Right. And I find that so comforting. And I want to, you know, get into that a little bit more because people that see people before they die, those are big clues um, and big reassurances around, you know what? I guess you're embarking on this journey, but there are going to be supports in place from the other realm to help you transition. Um, and you won't know that till you yourself embark on it, but it's so comforting when someone tells me, because at the end, no one's gonna lie to you about what they see, right? And, and so those are the stories that really stick with me. 
uh -huh. perhaps they bring me a lot of comfort and I feel like it could bring a lot of other people comfort, Absolutely. right? And then obviously there are people that don't believe in anything and that's okay too. Right. It's everyone's perspective. And how do we still support each other? Because we're all going to go on this journey at some point. Yes, absolutely. Wow. Well, the, the fact that um, you've experienced these things with these individuals and you've had a very unique experience, I would say, because you're right there with them at the point of their death and you're having a reading with them, a reading of tarot cards, which wasn't even something you were taught or went to any kind of school for, but it came to you intuitively. And now you're having an intuitive connection, if I may use the word, with another individual through this medium of tarot. Yeah. Yeah, I just, you know, um, it's just when you have a tarot reading, you know that the person that's trying to give you messages, it's all around what you're open to. And it really can be cathartic to have a reading. And so, yeah, I, I don't know, like, we'll see one ask me in a year from now how I was able to incorporate this into uh, experiences for people who are transitioning. Uh, yeah, I don't know how I'll do it, but we'll see. Yeah. And, and have you thought about like, you know, you, you've sort of come into the tarot deck and tarot reading sort of organically. Have you thought about taking yeah. courses or, or learning from someone? Or do you feel that you want to stay on the journey with you and I'll say spirit or God or the universe um, and, and just get your skill directly through that communication or connection? So I took an intro like one day, it was a few hours, a uh, course when I was interested, but I didn't think I was going to be buying my own deck at any point. Uh, it was just to kind of understand how it all might work. But to be honest, I'm not a very, I can't go to structured things very easily. I'm not a person, like I can't do structured things. I'm very much like out there. What do I find? Yes, the information is helpful, but it has to resonate with me and I have to find my intuitive meanings for it. And when I'm doing a reading, sometimes, you know, I feel like, oh my God, these cards, I feel like there's no other, I bought so many decks after this, but it's the first deck and it's the only deck that I feel like it's so obvious to me what the messages are when they, you know, the different cards come together. Right. And so I think I, I want to tap into that a bit more and I think I've tapped into it and it, it works for me, but yes, I'm always open to learning more. Like there's other types of uh, decks out there. I just received, received a Lenorm Lenormand deck. Right. Someone gifted it to me. Yeah. So I'm going to be like learning that because I feel like it still opens up your world. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Always open to learning, but I feel like in terms of how I do my readings, it's just a very personal and um, yeah, it's a very personal journey for me that I, I go inward to, to get to um, how I'm going to work forward with this. So. Hold on one second, Zara. I don't know if that makes sense. Okay, so Zara, the 888 event, um, and, and um, you've now become involved with the 888 event and Tezza, and tell us a little bit about how that came to be. Yeah, so Tezza, I've taken the Akashic Records course with her, level one, mm -hmm. and I've been to her for readings, and she's an amazing bright light that helps people who are looking to do this work. And so I've connected with her on many, many, um, in many ways, I would say, I've been to her workshops and stuff that she does. And so, yeah, she's hosting this event, uh, August 8th and 9th, and on the 8th, I'm going to be providing tarot reading guidance. Uh, I'll be available there for the full day and then, but I won't be there on the 9th because there'll be other readers on the 9th. But yeah, it's an amazing event where you're going to meet some amazing high vibrational beings who are here to support and guide people. And so I'm really excited about that event. Well, we're excited to, to visit you at your booth and, and get to have the experience of a tarot reading with you. Thank you, Zara, for, for allowing us the opportunity to interview you. And, um, Thank you. Anything you want to share with the audience that maybe I've, you know, haven't asked you or, or um, maybe something you yeah. want to share that? Go ahead. Yeah, just from my own personal 
um, just around how people view tarot. They, they think they want a psychic reading. They want to know, yes, am I going to meet this guy? Am I not going to meet that guy? Or am I going to get that job or not get that job? But I would say that tarot is really rich with a lot more than that. Mm -hmm. It can be a tool that you can use to really help support and guide you. Uh, not just someone looking for, you know, I had a, I just, I usually don't talk to, like to talk about clients, but I will talk about this one client who came to me after they had been to three other readers because it was a psychic fair and said that person didn't tell me what I wanted to hear. But I want you to tell me what I'm going to hear, what I need to hear. And I said, and what is that? And she wanted a specific answer. And I said, you know, I can't, I can't do that because you, I could, I mean, you can go pay someone to give you that answer. I mean, and you can pay anyone to tell you what you want to hear. But that person came in with a preconceived notion about, okay, when this, this is what I want to hear and I'll pay you to say it. There are people like that. And I feel like there's so much richness. If you want to really go deep and you really want to do some work, tarot, like I actually support people in an ongoing journey as well around tarot, a weekly basis. You know, they can have appointments with me to do that personal work. But I feel like, yes, it's fun. You can have a reading, a, you know, 20 minute reading at the fair, but it, it's more than that. If, if you want to explore um, and, and work on, on specific things in your life, it really is rich with a support. And I feel like if you're open to that, when you're going to your reading, be open to what's going to come out as opposed to, I need to hear this answer. And if I'm not hearing that, there could be so much richness coming at you, but you're not going to hear it. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage people to just go into reading, be open and be curious and, and just go where it needs to go because there it would be guidance in that for you. Amazing. Amazing. Well, thank you for sharing that. And I agree with you. I agree that there's so much more depth in in experiencing a reading than what it is you're coming to to get an answer to so it's a really good way to come to this event or to any tarot reader with no with no expectation and just open to yeah. receive and open to receive yeah. what the universe has to offer you and then maybe after that point, you may ask, you, you may want to ask your question or you never know, your question may have been answered in that, in that experience. So I agree with you. I find off question will get answered. You're right. I feel like it'll get answered if you're open, you know, lead there. But I find that in that one particular scenario it was really difficult because there was richness and I, I felt there was richness. I didn't want to impose that. But at the same time, I was like, you know, there is so much guidance here, but you want an answer. And the answer is, is this guy going to be with me or not? And I could say, yeah, he's going to be with you. And you might come back to me for that same thing, but that's, that's not what it's about. Right? Um, and so I feel like people can miss out on those opportunities if they go in with, yes, you may have a question and it'll come up and you're welcome to ask it, but be open to other information. Do you, do you help others? do their own readings or help them experience tarot from their own energies? Hmm. I haven't actually done that. I have done group readings by Zoom for, you know, company during the pandemic that wanted to do something fun. I did like a few minute readings for all of them because they knew each other. I've done couples therapy, or not therapy, but support, right. you know, where two couples having an issue came to me and but I did separate readings for them then they went home to do their work around that so I help couples I help some groups I do parties I do events. but my the thing I enjoy the most is like having someone that comes to me that's open uh and I have that connection and one-on-one -on -one time with them and if they come back to me again I find that even more fulfilling because I feel like there's so much richness um and um so many things can open up for people if they're open to Thank you, Zara. Thank you again for, for allowing us this interview. Thank you. We really appreciate you. Thank you. I really appreciate you too. Thank you so much for making the time to interview everybody. I can't imagine how busy you must be, but thank you so much for being flexible and allowing me the time and, um, and being flexible with when I had some time to do this. So I appreciate you. Thank you, Zara. Thank you. Thank you.